50 seconds of logos. Welcome, explorers, to Avalonia, a modest civilization trapped behind an impassable ring of never-ending mountains. Strange narration. Also, we'll find out this modest civilization exists on what seems to be the only island turtle on the entire planet. If we're supposed to be explorers in this story, where the f*** are we from? Also, also, that is not how rings work. What you've just described as a whole. Avalonia's greatest explorers, the Clades, have now set their sights on pulling off the impossible. They haven't made it outside the hole you live in. Your greatest explorers sound pretty sh** at their jobs. This movie will spend the next few minutes regaling us with tales of Jaeger finding fun and creative methods of child endangerment. And the public seems to love it so much that they've documented word for word what these two talk about while almost dying in jungles, almost dying in lava, and almost dying in birds. Or maybe Velociraptors? Wait, Stunning Steve, Rowdy Roy, and Sly Sarah? Unless these articles were written by wrestlers, everyone in this modest civilization sounds like an egotistical asshole. For what lies beyond that horizon is Avalonia's future and our glory. Jaeger used a lot of words to say MacGuffin. Hey, Dad, what about these plants? Sure, those can be MacGuffins too, but I'm not your father, I think. Searcher, we're explorers. Not gardeners. Jaeger Clade would be the bones of cinema sense. You're my son. But I'm not you. I'm not you, Dad Cliche. I don't mean to interrupt, but I actually think Baby Clade's right. Even if Searcher has stumbled on to something great, Callisto can't possibly know that the glowy plants are the only worthy item they will discover. Send Searcher and someone back with the plants for testing, and Jaeger and whoever else wants to can keep exploring. Even though they end up finding something that saves Avalonia's troubles for the time being, Callisto has no way to know that. So this is still basically premature celebration. I'm not saying we had to see every last detail about how they were able to discover what Pando could do and integrate it into Avalonia's society, but goddamn, a montage shouldn't be too much to ask. I want a montage! Morning, Mr. Clade! Rory, Mr. Clade was my dad's name. Call me Searcher. Considering Searcher knows who Rory is, this would imply that they have talked in the past, and that would imply Rory has said Mr. Clade in the past, and I'm just wondering if Searcher tries to get Rory to stop calling him Mr. Clade every f***ing time they communicate with each other, because that has to be f***ing irritating for someone, namely me. If it weren't for what you discovered, there'd be no power, or lights, or cars, or, or okay, radios, okay. or- Good thing this kid showed up to deliver all this exposition on why these radioactive tomatillos are important. You need to harvest those crops. Yeah, let's not run out of pando. No pando means no power. Back to horse and buggy, no thank you. <laughs> I like my air- Good thing this news position showed up to tell the farmers who grow them why these radioactive tomatillos are important. I mean, what 16-year-old boy doesn't like seeing their parents smooch? Mm. Weirdly, probably not all of them. And now I'm a little confused and frankly bothered by that thought. Movie continues the movie myth that anyone can fry an egg and keep the yolk together that perfectly. It can't be done, damn it. I'm tired of the movies making me feel like a failure. Looks like someone forgot to weed the North Field. Father, what is a weed? other than a plant growing somewhere that you find inconvenient. Ethan might be a terrible farmer, but he would be excellent at cinema sense. Of all the things they've created with the Pando, farm equipment wasn't one of them. This dog has been around Pando its whole life and doesn't know not to pick up one of the Pando pellets without getting shocked. So either the dog is dumb or has an electric shock fetish. I don't find either of those ideas entertaining. Ethan's crew, not your crew. Yeah, but his friends love me. Dads who think their kids' friends are also his friends, and maybe the movie is making that point, but it's still uncomfortable to have to sit through, so f*** you movie. They sold that already? Oh, I knew I should have camped out. The idea that any products exist that require someone to camp out for them. All the way off with that bullshit. All the way. Okay, we have allotted three to five minutes of cute flirtation. I love the representation here with Ethan and Diazzo, which makes it all the more irritating that we don't see Diazzo again until the end of the movie. Farmer. These are cards? These are seriously f***ing cards? Ethan wanted to camp out for f***ing goddamn shit ass cards? Considering the amount of infrastructure being powered by Pando, like hover cars, street lights, and airships, delivering these things by the crate in a pickup truck seems insufficient to keep this metropolis running. If Clade Farms is a smaller operation and much of the stuff is provided by larger companies, that detail seems like something that might be important to the movie's message, or at least help us understand how this world works. There you go. Thanks, Searcher. Do the Powerballs need to be exchanged here, or is this more about getting in a shot of these statues? Legend. Playing fetch in the middle of a busy downtown area. Is that how Legend lost one of his legs? Dancing in the kitchen, and even more importantly, dancing in the kitchen with a f***ing big sharp knife in your hand. You know her? Yeah, she used to work with my dad. What is the leader of Avalonia doing in our front yard? How is it possible that Meridian didn't know her husband's former acquaintanceship with Callisto? And even if Sergio doesn't like to talk about the past, he's still the f***ing savior of Avalonia. He and Callisto would have worked on something prior to today. Uh, can the venture fly over the mountains? <laughs> well, sorry, nothing can fly that high. The sneaking suspicion that this question and answer have more to do with the plot than to do with physics or logic. Where did you find these? It started in the Northeast Territory, 
and has been spreading like wildfire ever since. If Callisto is so concerned about the future supply of Pando, then why did she just park her goddamn airship on top of a bunch of Pando? Searcher, I'm mounting an expedition to save Pando, and I want you to come with me. Callisto, I don't go on expeditions. I'm not my father. Searcher acts like being asked to go on this mission has something to do with his sense of self and purpose as opposed to the fact that he is an expert in the field of the problem they are trying to solve. This might be hard for you, given the intro song about your adventures, but despite what the movie thinks, this is very much not about you. When do we head out? Whoa, whoa, hold up. You're not coming with me. So glad this movie doesn't have that scene where the kid disobeys his father's orders and is caught stowing away on the ship, but it's too late to turn back. So glad that doesn't happen. Our son is on your ship! Damn it! Every second we delay puts Avalonia in grave danger. Yes, the danger posed by being without your airships and automatic coffee makers. Though Pando seems to be thousands of plants here on the surface, underground, it is actually a singular organism. Everyone in the city is sucking the Pando so hard that I'm wondering how does the crew specifically selected for this mission not know basic information like this already? When we get to the end of the movie, come back here and tell me if you don't think the entering of this hole is suddenly disgusting. And no, it's not the cloaca. And lucky for this crew that there is a wide open space in the middle of all the Pando routes so they can get their ship down safely. We end up finding out this is the inside of a giant turtle creature. Why is there a clear flying path inside a giant turtle creature? Was God like, I'm gonna make sure this turtle has a fly zone in its body because I predict one day a colony of humans will use and abuse the turtle's resources and almost kill it. Ethan? Oh, hey, Dad. <laughs> you brought the dog? He brought the dog. I guess it's possible this could be exciting, but I have zero bearings on where they are exactly and therefore have zero clue what is actually going on. But hey, the animation is neat, I guess. Landon! Oh, oh my god! This dog is going to cause more people to almost die than just about any other character on this expedition. F this dog, man. Meridian has to fly the ship to Zion so they can do battle with T-cells, B-cells, and Sentinels. So I guess the sin is the Matrix Revolutions? Not to keep harping on this giant turtle thing, but is this turtle just in constant pain? There's a goddamn ship flying through it, and Searcher is just falling through various parts of its insides. Not to mention we're going to find out Jaeger has been in here and shit up for the last 25 years. How is this thing still alive? The blood cells in this body seem to work without arteries or veins because they are fish or some shit. Tentacle porn jump scares. You're in the presence of the one, the only, Jaeger. Dad? Oh, wow, said no one who has ever seen any movie before. I know you're worried about your dad, but I've seen him out in the field firsthand. He knows how to survive. He does not. And in fact, all the backstory we had to read earlier, the scene on the snowy cliff, and their reunion moments ago were all about Searcher being saved by his father. Callisto, you can lie to kids, but don't lie to me. Why don't you go hang out in the cockpit while I help them with repairs? Yeah, because leaving Ethan unattended has worked out so well for this family in the recent past. And yeah, they have Caspian keeping an eye on him, but it's f***ing Caspian. I am not an oddly shaped rock. No, but this movie is providing us with some oddly shaped humor, and I'm not sure which I prefer. Well, would an oddly shaped rock know that you gave me a machete for my birthday? One that has a great memory and understands it's the thought that counts more than the gift would for sure. Quit being so dismissive, searcher. For a crop duster, <laughs> you are one gutsy pilot. Which is good because the other one died. A fact that the movie has no intention of acknowledging. Well, the three things I love the most are my family, my farm, and flying. But what about yourself, Meridian? You should really take some time to love yourself. And yes, you are getting a sin for that neglect. Self-care is serious. This is way faster than our tractor. I gotta get me one of these. Even after Ethan finds out that this is an animal, he will express no remorse for driving around in its lungs like an asshole. A vast, undiscovered wilderness filled with fantastic creatures. The movie wants exploring to be all fun and never talks about the explorers that shit themselves to death or really any of the many ways the video game Oregon Trail taught me to stay the f home. I did it. Oh, hey Diazzo, how was my weekend? Prematurely practicing your celebrations. <laughs> Holy sh! did Disney just turn a wacky wall crawler into a fucking cute alien friend for our protagonist? Because I think Disney just turned a wacky wall crawler into a fucking cute alien friend for our protagonist. And I used to eat these. I've said too much. Where the f*** did Jaeger get the fuel to make a flamethrower? <laughs> Are we saying that he was able to hang onto this ledge with his thighs? I see it happen, but I do not believe it happened. <laughs> Osmosis. Pissing in someone's lungs. Here, here. It's okay. Movie says f you to science and decides that the immune system can be befriended. I uh, thought Splat here was bringing me to my dad. Uh, 
Maybe I was wrong. You think? Not only is Ethan assuming he understands everything Splat is saying to him, but he also thinks Splat knows who Searcher is. And there's nothing that has happened to allow Ethan to come to that conclusion logically. F***ing Ethan, man. How has he lived this long? Now what? Jump! All of the clade men and legends survive this by blindly jumping with an extremely small margin of error. And they are spirited away to f*** with more of this creature's insides. You ain't seen nothing yet, kid. <laughs> I see Jaeger murdering the creatures that are saving his f***ing life. I see that! Hey, look! It's Jaeger Classic! This not product placement still manages to feel like it. And we'll incur the same penalty. Shoo! Seemed pretty harmless to me. A giant sized cotton candy looking object interacting with you seemed harmless. Have you seen killer clowns from outer space, Ethan? Have you? If you really, really want to impress this fella, this is what you do. You get him into a dangerous situation, like maybe one in which he almost dies. <laughs> and then you save him from it. Movie wants us to like this guy when all the evidence suggests that we should be terrified and call the authorities. But maybe Ethan doesn't know his thing unless he tries. Puberty. Ethan already has a thing and it's called a pando picker and he's really good with it. <laughs> he said pando picker. I'm only human people. Maybe we lower the temperature a little bit. Okay. What do you have in mind? A little primal outpost? Suggesting a competitive card game to release the tension between a father and son. Both appear to be extremely competitive. And yet, somehow, this works. Also, as it turns out, the writers made Primal Outpost a fully fleshed out and playable game. Which shows an incredible amount of dedication to the details and the theme. So I will give the movie a plus one regeneration on this sin. However, its existence seems to be only theoretical and not physical. Meaning I want to play it, but I can't. So I must deal a plus one damage in response. You know what? You want bad guys? Fine! You two are the bad guys! because you both are annoying me! Duh! Kids! Well, if we're gonna find the heart of Pando, we gotta get through this. I gotta get through this. I gotta get through this. I gotta make it. Gotta make, gotta make it through. That's acid. No one can fly through that. And why are you so close to it? Because it looks like the venture is really f***ing close to the acid. Writers thought that the lovable sidekick thing had been overdone, so they made this dog an absolute liability. This dog, man. Whether this is on evolution or the animators, hanging ball sacks was an interesting design for the immune system. That was so primal outpost. I'm beginning to think Ethan is just lobbing the primal outpost accusation around as a catch-all for things he thinks are cool. No! The blood in this body just goes wherever the f it wants. They're finally getting along. <laughs> About time, right? Meridian doesn't need to be bouncing off the walls or anything, but she seems way too calm and collected for all the things that have happened over the last several hours. Her husband has reunited with the father who left him and has probably given him a f***ed up view on just about everything since. Her son went missing for a period of time and almost died quite a few times during that period. They've discovered a brand new f***ing world no one except for Jaeger Clay knew existed. I'm not sure if I should give the character of Meridian a sin for how unbelievable her reactions seem or remove a sin for how f***ing cool and calm she is as a character. I don't know. I'm torn. And I hate being torn, so. You want to take the wheel? I'm dying for a cup of coffee. Wait, really? Yeah. Just follow the roots. Giving the small bit of instruction to a teenager about to get behind the wheel of an airship for the first time. I mean, f up until the day before, neither of them had ever even seen this kind of vehicle. What kind of airship is that? I don't know. I've never seen anything like it. I feel like you need to say a little more than follow the fucking roots, but you do you, Meridian. Why is this place so weird? Maybe it's not. Maybe you're weird. Maybe your mom's weird. Maybe you shouldn't be so quick to judge the weirdness of a place that you are one of the lucky few to get to experience. I'm not sure why this statement is getting under my skin so much. Maybe I'm weird. Wait, am I weird? Am I? Also, can we address the Ant-Man in the room for a second? I'm not saying Strange World and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania are exactly the same, but there are enough similar feels with the Strange Worlds being discovered in both movies that I feel like I have to be me and say something. They were not only released a mere few months apart, but Strange World got released right around the date that was originally supposed to be set for Ant-Man. They both also take obvious inspiration from works like Fantastic Voyage and Journey to the Center of the Earth. They even both happen to have similar scenarios where a parental figure was stuck in the discovered worlds for several years. It's fucking weird. Or maybe I should say it's strange. I've been down here for 25 years and I've never seen anything like this. Why are you even surprised? You said you never made it past the burning sea. And now you're past the burning sea. There's probably a bunch of shit you've never seen. Our plant's not sick. It's at war. Oh. 
Wait, what the f did you just say? Now this has turned into Fern Gully War of the Plants, and I'm not sure if I love that or hate it. I mean, so I'm gonna be safe and vote for the latter. We have Pando. Do you know how much Pando that would take? How does Jaeger know how much Pando that would take? He walked away from the Pando discovery 25 years ago and made his life here. Before today, he had zero clue what they are using Pando for in Avalonia and what attributes it has added. Searcher will break the Pando up, stick it in a gun, and fire it at the creatures attacking the Pando. I just need to know if it's that easy to create ammo that will fire effectively out of a gun, because I really f***ing hope it's not. That idea is scary as hell. Listen up. Bring up every crate of Pando from the hull. Looks like we're turning the venture into the world's biggest crop duster. Now I have to ask, is it that f***ing easy to turn a non-crop dusting vessel into a working crop dusting vessel? Maybe that's not as f***ed up as the gun thing, but it's just as ridiculous. This is our thing, Ethan. Father and son. Really? Because earlier you were super pissed off he was learning to shoot your dad's flamethrower, but you're cool with him shooting essentially the same type of weapon, just with different ammo? Pot calling the searcher kettle Pando colors, or something. I feel like I'm in my element when I'm exploring this world. You are inside a turtle. Ethan has really become good at using these creatures for traveling purposes. Not even one misstep, which is all the bullshit, and he should have already fallen to his death three or four times by now. So now Ethan and searcher are outside of the giant turtle creature, but how? Is there a giant opening in the turtle's body that they they are able to escape from, or did they just tear through part of the turtle's epidermis? How the f is this turtle still alive? This movie on the surface does not appear confusing, but if you step back and think about any of it, it's the most confusing piece of work since Finnegan's Wake. You're just as confusing as James Joyce, Strange World. Goddamn James Joyce. If this place has an eye, it has to be attached to a head. Technically, Starro doesn't have a head, so there's one exception right there. And then there's the Billy Idol song, Eyes Without a Face, which seems impossible, but who am I to argue with Billy Idol? Point is, a few moments ago, you thought you were not living on the back of a turtle, and that there was something more to be found this side of the mountains. So maybe cool it with the presumptions, Heath. <laughs> I don't know what you just said, but I'm pretty sure it was inappropriate. What? Why are you sure? That doesn't even make sense in the context of what is going on in the movie right now. A giant creature. What? A giant creature. You can't be serious. What the f***? After all the weird shit they've just seen on this voyage to the center of a reptile, why would they not believe Searcher and Ethan at least enough to do the five minutes of research it would take to find out this is true? I dedicated my whole life to doing something that no one has ever done. And now you get to do it. What is this conflict about other than the third act? For as strict as Callisto has been about this mission, she's weirdly lax about people just commandeering the smaller ships whenever they see fit to wander off and have emotional talks or see what's on the other side of the mountain, which she specifically said they would not do till after they fixed the Pando issue. <laughs> Callisto? Movie decides to turn Callisto into a political villain here, and it makes no fucking sense. She's been down with every decision Searcher has made this entire time. She brought him specifically because he knows more about this than anyone. And now she's locking up him and his family. She also goes back to being on Searcher's side so quickly it makes this forced tension all the more bullshit. And I don't know what you think you saw. You know exactly what they think they saw because they told you what they think they saw. You have no idea what you're doing. You are going to destroy Avalonia! Despite Searcher's certainty of this destruction, the movie has yet to establish why exactly that would be the case. I'm guessing it has something to do with the biodegradation of this giant turtle, but if that's what it's about, I'm going to need an explanation for why that is so bad. The worst case scenario I'm seeing is some super rich and fertile soil to grow all your crops from, including the pando. I know that is a very dark interpretation, but maybe the turtle is a d you don't know. Ah, I'm not qualified to fly this ship. It is all yours. <laughs> Piloting is hard. Buddy, you are not qualified for anything. How you were put in charge of flying is a bigger mystery than how human life came to exist on the back of a giant turtle. And still, no one questions Callisto's leadership. But if I can dig a hole for them, they can take care of the rest. And you both know this based on what? Meridian, open this door. Sorry, can't hear you. Answering someone with I can't hear you, which clearly means you can hear them. So why say anything? It's not funny or cute. It's just making it very clear that you are a liar. My legacy isn't those mountains. It's you. <laughs> f***ing what? This sentiment somehow works and Jaeger does not f***ing deserve this sentiment to work in the goddamn least. He's a f***ing terrible father and has done nothing to change that perception. One could argue he's made his relationship with his son worse. I'm honestly not sure how any of this actually saves the creature, but what ifs? You do you, strange world. We were too late. Characters all need to momentarily think they lost so the movie can squeeze in one more oh no, we're not gonna make it moment before the final miracle. Look at all that glowy pollen. Searcher, Ethan, and Jaeger's sinuses are going to be f***ed up for weeks. I'm starting to think that turtle is a the heart beating now makes me wonder how this thing was alive before when it looked to be in complete cardiac arrest. There was another kid on the ship the entire time? 
It's great and all, they saved the creature that Avalonia has been abusing for the past 25 years. But why are they still down there just traipsing all over its insides? This is a f***ing living creature! Everyone gathers to worship this windmill, but we still haven't heard a single person acknowledge Duffel for giving his life in service of Avalonia. Getting high on your own supply! How does this planet have enough food to sustain this giant-ass turtle? You told him I like farming. Conquering those mountains? is our legacy. Well, a legacy isn't always something you get to choose. Yeah. I'm a leaf on the wind. This is way faster than our tractor. <laughs> I have got to give me one of these! Searcher's right. The mission is to get to Pando's heart. Because hmm. as we can all see, that big giant kills everything. It's okay. I got a better weapon. Vegetables. Okay, I gotta ask. Why farming? I'm looking for a job. In fact, I've made up my mind to find a career that I can learn and grow into. Who am I? I'm a hard worker. I set high goals, and I've been told that I'm persistent. I'm not a farmer, Dad. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Get off my plane.